Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Vert Scene Netcast. Vert Scene, as you know, is the online magazine of virtualization and cloud computing. We haven't had a netcast in a little while, but uh, we've got a lot of things happening, a lot of things to talk about in the virtual world. Just last week, we had VMworld, a lot of stuff coming out from VMworld. So, uh, wow. I don't have all the scoop on that yet. Uh, we've got a report coming from our VMware uh, representative in the area. He'll be coming and giving us a kind of a run through of everything that happened at VMworld. I would love to have gone, but just couldn't do it. So I'm looking forward to hearing all the details of what went on at VMworld. Let's talk about some of the things that are happening in the virtualization and cloud computing arena. Uh, since our last netcast, since that's been a while back, that was uh, Vertzine number 25. And uh, since then, we've talked about a few things on the blog. VMware is making Zimbra 8 easier to install by turning it into a, uh, an appliance. You know, previously the appliance was version 7, and version 8 is out now, so they are updating that appliance and making it easier uh, to use the appliance and to install it. And there's a lot of other little tweaks in there that are really, really handy. Now, uh, I've also got an article posted about, it's a link to an article, about free and open source FOSS, F-O-S-S, free open source uh, software, and uh, it's FOSS Linux Virtualization Tools. Now, what that's about is, you know, VMware gives you tools that you can use based on their hypervisor, okay? And a lot of different hypervisors have their own built-in tools. Linux in the past has been a little bit lean on its um, tools that are available for the Linux-based hypervisors like KVM and so forth. So these are, this is an article that's running down a list of different open source virtualization tools to use with the different uh, Linux hypervisors. So that's really cool. You need to check on that article. Go to the vertzine.com website and uh, click on that article and go read the article and look at those tools. You'll find it really uh, informative. All right, Samsung Zero Client in Healthcare with Improvata. Uh, that particular article I linked to uh, was back on August 1st, so it's been a little while back. Uh, it's not. It's actually not an article. It's a. It's a video. But it's a video that demos Samsung's Zero Client with Improvata and Single Sign-On. Now, this is actually something we've looked at where I work at High Point Regional Health System uh, as an all-in-one unit that will make it e very easy as a Zero Client to run Improvata, which uses the Teradici firmware built into uh, the Samsung all-in-one unit, and it really works great and we were very impressed with it and this video get, gives a demo and I've got a link to the video I've actually embedded it on the Vertzine site so that you can see <clears throat> excuse me how that works and like, like I said we're really impressed with it we're going with WISE uh, P I think it's P20 terminals and with the Samsung terminals where we have to have a very very small footprint basically the only thing you need is enough room for a keyboard and enough room for a monitor, and you got it. It's all built in there. So, good thing to check out. Really interesting how that works. All right, news from VMworld. Changes are coming. Some of these changes are really, really important. Now, like I said, we'll have a fuller rundown of what happened at VMworld as soon as I get it from our rep. But in the meantime, I can tell you that... Uh, we have a new uh, CEO of VMware, uh, Pat Gesslinger, who was the former president of EMC, will step in as the VMware CEO. And uh, so he then gave kind of his vision of where VMware will be heading with him at the helm. And uh, one of the first things he announced, and this is the big news as far as I'm concerned, is that they have done away with the VRAM based pricing. Some people have taken to calling this uh, the VMware tax, <laughs> the V tax, uh, because it is really, I mean, when you get right down to it, it was money for nothing, <laughs> as the old song says, you know, money for nothing. Well, uh, they have realized that this has not been very popular with their customers, of which I am one. 
and I was not very pleased with it. So they are doing away with that whole model and they're going to go back to just charging on a per CPU basis as they have in the past, which is much easier to deal with, much easier to understand. So that is a good thing from my perspective. Also, uh, included in the newly launched vCloud Suite 5.1, uh, which will be available on September 11th, will be uh, the core virtual machine creation and management system of vSphere 5.1 uh, will be there. The new release includes the ability to use live migration or vMotion access across server racks that do not necessarily have shared storage. That's a biggie, okay? To be able to migrate basically from one rack to another even if there's not shared storage, that's huge. So that'll be a big feature. vCloud Director, which is a software product for uh, that was created for a virtual data center with compute, storage, and networking, such as vSphere, is a product for generating, configurating, configurating, <laughs> configuring. I threw an threw an aiding on there when there shouldn't have been. Generating, configuring, and deploying a virtual machine. A virtual data center may span several vSphere server clusters and run up to thirty thousand virtual machines. CTO Steve Harold followed Gil Singer's uh, <coughs> keynote with a demonstration of a virtual data center being created from a checkbox list, much as a single virtual machine was previously created under vSphere. So that's exciting as well. Uh, vCloud Networking and Security 5.1 allows the creation of secure virtual networks for each VM or tenant on a multi-tenant server. VMware's new VXLAN capability has been included which allows an IP and network uh, MAC address to follow the virtual machine when it's moved provided virtualization administrators have generated a pool of top of rack network switches. Again, pretty cool stuff particularly as we get bigger and bigger and bigger in our data centers and our virtual uh, back-end uh, configuration. VMotion was previously limited to movements within a server rack using the same storage file system. With VXLAN capability added, the network switches can be virtualized and used to move virtual machines across server racks and storage systems because the VMs keep their IP and MAC addresses and VMs in a new location work with databases and other dependencies as they did before, but with these new resources on which they're located, it acts as an extension of the original data server center rack. Okay. vCenter Site Recovery Manager 5.1 will ensure the availability or recovery of applications running in a virtual data center. Uh, the vCloud suite will come in a standard, advanced, and enterprise version uh, tier there. So standard, advanced, and enterprise. Standard pricing is $5,000 per CPU. Advanced, $7,500 per CPU. And enterprise will be $11,495 per CPU. So lots of news. Like I said, boy, this is big news coming out of VMworld. And, uh, you know, more to come is all I can tell you because I still haven't got the rundown of everything that's going to be coming or has come out now of VMworld. Now, this last item is a bit humorous. <laughs> I wanted to share it with you. The public's views on the cloud are varied and confusing. This is linking to an article that talked about a survey that was done by Citrix Systems and they apparently Americans are very confused about what cloud computing is. A lot of them actually think that cloud computing is literally talking about clouds in the sky. <laughs> and so, <laughs> go figure. Uh, a lot of weird ideas about cloud computing. I encourage you to read this article. It's really kind of funny to read some of the things that they think. Um, the survey was more of, of more than a thousand American adults was conducted in August of 2012 and shows that while the cloud is widely used, it's still misunderstood. For example, 51% of respondents, including a majority of millennials, okay, fairly young folks, believe stormy weather can interfere with cloud computing. <laughs> Nearly one third see the cloud as a thing of the future, while 97% are actually using cloud services today via online shopping, banking, social networking, and file sharing. Despite this confusion, 3 in 5, 59%, said they believe the workplace of the future will exist entirely in the cloud. So, eh, they got some concepts, but they're a little unclear on others. 
<laughs> so if you have a stormy day, your cloud may go down. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, read the article. I think you'll find it kind of interesting what people think. You know, it takes a while for technology to become part of the whole zeitgeist, you might say, of thinking uh, for just regular users. You know, some of us that are engineers, we go, what? How can you possibly think that? But people that are, you know, auto mechanics or chefs or whatever, they have expertise in their areas, but not in cloud computing. So, interesting stuff. Anyway, trust you enjoyed this edition of the Vert Z Netcast. Join us next time, and remember until then, keep your head in the cloud. Mm -hmm.